and the thing that broke me right they got this big delivery in a second hand delivery so it wasn't new tires that they got there was like part warrants over the time which you could still do right yeah the the guy goes i need all them in size and brand order and i went <laughs> i went in, in size and brand order have you want seen it <laughs> uncomprehendable how many tires there was Are you serious he says i wanted it in size and brand order which i had done but i hadn't done the way he had envisioned to do it yeah yes of course what's up i says this isn't for me he went what do you mean I says, I fucking hate this. It was like a weight and just left off. So welcome to the We're Not There Yet podcast. We had a little go there for five minutes and I messed it up. So this is take two. Thanks for coming on. John is the owner of Big Fat Beard. He came in today. He's actually one of my clients. Sorry, I haven't really been doing this for the past couple of months. Life gets ahead of you sometimes, but I love doing this. We're currently in my... The casa, my home, where the first episodes were. So I'm excited to have John here and kickstart this episode. Thank what? you for having me. I'm being free to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to come on, mate. Um, yes, I am the owner and founder of Big Fat Beard. Yeah. So, John, tell the people how you got started. Kind of where were you at the time you went? I'm actually going to have a wee crack at starting a business here because a lot of people maybe dabble and maybe just start in a Facebook page, maybe just start an Instagram page but, and then showing their friends and then let it fizzle because they never have the, act, to be honest, the balls, they ever go and do it. And I mean that if you're a woman as well, they're just the saying, have the balls to go and make that jump, you know, save up a thousand pound, go go to the Go For It program and get a five grand loan, 10 grand loan and really commit what, what made you get to that decision that you were going, yep, this is for me. I mean, it's funny you say that, right? Because... Obviously, I have the barbershop now too, and we have an apprentice in the shop. Mm. And we're just talking about sort of like your future and long term commitment and find something that you love to do, mm. right? And whenever we were, whenever we were talking, I think we counted seventeen different jobs that I've had up until I started oh, like five shit. years. So you were getting around, big son. I mean, like that was jobs where I'm going working for a company. Plus, I had like we say bits and pieces going on the side so like <laughs> I've always I've always had that itch to needed scraps do you know what I mean yeah but Big Fat Beard started not by luck but just by where I was at the time you know I was in a, a, a local car manufacturer's um, I was shopping online just having to do during the day do you know what I mean yeah. and I was going to buy some beard oil some beard balm and stuff from another company which I had bought from Quay Ragney loved their stuff do you know what I mean yeah. and my best mate used to say right beside me as I say we're off his job he says mate would you not just make your own stuff mm-hmm. I said what do you mean he goes mate you spend a force on that every time I see you you're, you're shopping online for something dropping beer really <laughs> just have a crack at it and see what happens I say like, right dead on will do um, so I ordered a couple of ingredients offline because I knew what I'd liked right and then I was exploring other ingredients and then put them together and trying on myself for a wee while and it just it wasn't happening straight away so then I went back to the drawing board and tweaked the the initial base ingredient for the beard oil that was the first product I brought out was the beard oil mm-hmm. and then gave my mate a sample and he was like mate that smells great feels great too happy to his it is but he had a wee small I don't want to say small beard but a shorter beard mm-hmm. like you know just the trimmed in type yeah, yeah. So I wanted someone with a bit of Go and do a couple of guys across the water who done sort of uh, product reviews and had uh, reviewed other companies who were well established. Uh-huh. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I got up the start on the PM here and be like, man, I'm trying to start up here, but I want a wee bit of initial feedback. And they're like, no problem. Send it over. Send over four samples, four right. different noise. That was a four OG sense that I'd done. Uh-huh. And they were like, yeah. You're on the winner? Good shit, mate. Love it. There's nothing they, even, they wouldn't even pick it apart. I actually, one of the guys, I actually said to him, I don't want to know what's good about mm-hmm. the product. I mm-hmm. want you to come back to me and say, John, fix this. Or yep. this is crap. Or yeah. don't like this. Yeah. And he came back to me and he says, mate, that's sweet. That's bang on. He says, there's nothing that I would pick a hole in that. If I was doing a facial review, all he says, I would score very, very high. And I was like, mate, come on. He was like, no, I'm serious. I'm not being nice. I'm being straight. He says, you know, one of you watch the rest of the reviews, you'll know I've ripped stuff apart. I'm mm. like, fucking happy days. So then, we needed the name. And uh, we were about three, as with three names. So you sent this to this guy before the name? This was the feedback. So it was like a, this was like initial feedback. 
the most loaded guys had it by about five or six and the collective feedback was mate that's bang on Happy day. now not all of them like the exact scent profile mm-hmm. because you can't please everyone mm-hmm. you know some guys are like all natural stuff some guys are like real masculine like woody bourbon whiskey. I'll be like that I'll be I'll on my side yeah so at the start I was only doing all natural oil <clears throat> so it was like your floral citrusy all that sort of stuff and the guys who that was their their bang or their bag or whatever you want to call it they were like mate love it mm-hmm. the guys who were like mate that's that that's that kind of my scent profile but the the feel of it on the beard and how mm-hmm. me the beard fell was incredible so I was like right. that's a win for me I can always add another sample profile for it. Absolutely. And then see, whenever you were at that stage, was this before you'd actually say, for example, go to the Go For program? Because I know you went through that. Is that pre Go For program or post? That's pre Go For program. Right. Okay. So you were doing the market research before you even took that step into there, oh, yeah. which is smart, just smart way to do things. Make sure there's a market. Yeah. Right. Sweet. Okay. So I needed a name. I'm a best mate, Sabbath Day, being work. And was this. We used to just sit and eat food all day because we had desk jobs. Yeah, yeah. He said, bastard. So I just called Big Fat Beard. And I was like, change the F to PH. That's a winner. Yeah. It's like the brown colors was that heel green and white, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was dead happy with it. The Gopher program. Um, so I already had um, products. I had them safety tested. I had the logo, the brand. I had everything set up. Mm-hmm. I went to them just for like a roadmap to success yeah like financial forecast where are you going to be in three years and I want no, let's, see, let's just go in that way because i done the same thing but not go for it i done the Prince's Trust version of go for it because yeah I was under 25 at the time and all this stuff I wrote my business plan back then you know how much of it came, came to light fucking none of it <laughs> fucking none of it Fucking none of it. <laughs> like, uh, to be fair, it did help me in regards to going the right direction. Yeah. But if you're looking at like the financial side of it and where I am now, they're 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 way apart. Yeah, because you, you just can't tell the future. Yeah. Business plan or not. AI, for example, how many business plans two years ago, let's say in a in um some sort of field, like data analysis. Two years ago, I'm going to start an analytics company. It's going to do amazing, blah, blah, blah. And they put down in their SWOT, you know, uh, you remember the SWOT analysis? Oh, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't put down AI. And then a year into their business, AI comes out. And AI can do everything they can do. I can do it in five minutes, asking it to do the equations and work out the data for me. You can't fucking yeah, plan for that. You can't plan for that. That's just one of those unforeseen circumstances. And that's life. Technology's advanced that quickly where you've, they've kind of just been hit up the face, man. Yep. So the only thing they can do, you can't beat it. So they probably joined them at this stage. Yeah, probably. Probably seems their their company, the AI company. Right, everyone, get ChatGPT open quick. <laughs> Mate, and tell you what, no scary. It's so efficient. It can be like it it's can be so efficient. Like I'd throw my hands up, and I have fire copy emails out using like a basic AI generator for like you know fire copy email yeah, because yeah. and. Obviously, whenever you log on them, you put in like your prompt. Mm. I was astonished at how quick it could generate a professional looking email. To uh-huh. send it. You know, if you type in something like, say, I don't know, say I came to you and I said, Josh, right, I want you to build me a website. Mm. I, so I went chat to you, Josh, can you build me a website for Big Fat Beard and include 56 products, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There. I go, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> take you about 10 minutes, right? That would have done about five seconds. Yeah, yeah. It's efficient for things like that. The one thing, I, I, we're going screw with here, we'll get back to the, the main yeah. thing in a minute, but the main thing with AI that I look at is the data set. So a data set is it has to have some sort of information to consume to give you an answer. Mm-hmm. But the main information that it, it has, or all the information it has, is human generated. Yeah. So where do you get new human, human generated content? Humans. Yeah. So we're not going to get rid of the human element. New ideas, new strategies, new creative thinking, new new things happen, and as humans that are going to put that data set into AI. Mm-hmm. Now, rem- like I don't want to say uh, remedial, but like easier stuff. Like for example, fire me a basic um, legal email on 
X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. I'll fire at you. Be very good. And you know you can't really screw with with, with legal. Legal is legal. There's no you can't. You don't need to jazz it up. Mm-hmm. But for example, with copyright, because I do copyright and like for like ad sets. So when it first came out, like I would have been like, oh, it's amazing. Let me see what it comes up. And then you would do A B test it. So A B testing is testing it against other copy, and then you get a winner, and then you keep that winner, yeah. and you put another one against it. And basically, it's like Gladiator. You're trying to get the best ad possible, right? Yeah. So. What I found with all the AI stuff that I got from ChatGPT, it always did worse than if I just sat down and worked out something myself every single time. And took your time to do it. And took my time to do it every single time. So I don't think it's there yet in terms of having new creativity. It kind of spins out some of the same stuff. But like for data and like email and like legal and like even just guiding you in the right direction, amazing. Well, you, Mind blown. You saying that and sorry to keep on the AI subject. Yeah. But I, I had a conversation with a family member about this recently, about mm-hmm. like AI and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And there was actually, uh, they trialed AI in a court case. Now, I can't remember if it was USA or it was Canada. Mm-hmm. And AI had, had all the facts. And the I think at the time it was the prosecution were submitting all the facts. And they were trying to um, prosecute some company. So obviously the CEO was responsible. Mm. and they would never prosecute them and reading out all the facts or like blah 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 and then one of the facts it was like about a date and time of where he was right right and the solicitor read it out it was like say today at such and such blah 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 you were in this and this and he went he went he went no no he says give me that date and time again and he was actually able to prove that he wasn't even in the country on that date and time so right. AI had a blank space and just filled it in because it didn't actually know. A random date? Yeah. So there are some things, whenever you use it, if it doesn't actually know the specifics, oh, it? it'll just make it up. Yeah. So it's Not cool. necessarily just the wind waffle, but something that can fit in and look like, right, that anybody wouldn't question. Yeah. Well, have you seen, ah, uh, fuck me, we're going right in this here. We're going, <laughs> but it is what it is. Really? It is what it is. Have you seen Google's Gemini? No. No, so Google's Gemini is like their chat TPT. So Gemini Ultra or Gemini Advanced, if you want to buy it on the Google One program, would be their direct competitor, the GPT-4. Uh-huh. So chat GPT, GPT-4. And this is fucking nuts. So if you go and ask it to generate, let's say, generate a white man playing basketball, mm. it physically can't generate an image of that. Every image comes out as a, as a, as a black man wow so it's inherently racist against white people and this I swear to god it was all over the news so it's inherently racist against white people and it's inherently racist against or not racist sexist against men so you would ask it for different uh, different um, kind of prompts for like a man in um, a CEO role mm-hmm. and it would generate a woman you would ask it for Show me the 54th president in the United States, which would have been whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it was. It was a white dude anyway. And it wouldn't have generated a black man who was wow. him. And then it was like, what the fuck is going on here? Google is literally being racist to real life events. You know, like these, these people were real people who were not, were not colored. They were white people. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, the way they've trained this AI, they are trained this AI to be diverse but in being diverse, it was actually became racist because it was like too trying to be really yes, diverse. Yes, wow. so it's been it's went so far to the right, which you could say was initially Nazism. Don't want to go there, but let's say that it was that's how it all started. Oh, we're doing the right thing, da, 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 da. And, it, and then fucking we know how that happened or where that went. Anyway, so Google's got to the point. Now I went, whoa, right, yeah. we're caught out here, Pardon like. Plug. We have an AI that is diverse, but actually completely racist against whites and completely hateful against men, which makes no fucking sense. But anyway, so they, they pulled the plug on all the image generation, won't generate images at the minute because of this glitch and they're trying to fix it. So that that's the kind of world that we're in at the minute where if we feed these AIs fake information, mm. fake data, fake events that never happened, trying to misconstrue history, the, the written history that we have, yeah. to be more diverse and stuff, when it really wasn't. History is history. Yeah, no, it's gory. It's fucking not nice. We're in a good period of time. It is what it is. It, is what it, is. it happened. As These days. AIs need to be regulated for to produce information which is factual. You'll have kids. Maybe my kids' kids will just be fucking 
monkeys again. Well, I have a clue about them. I have a clue, yeah, because they're getting information so readily available, but it could be wrong. It could be wrong. You could just change history. In 100 years, we could change history. Just think about it. So if we we die off, right, in 100 years, mm-hmm. and then our kids, they're fed propaganda that this actually happened, that this was a lie, and then their kids, kids could probably be like, yeah, that actually happened. They believe it. They believe a completely false narrative and how things work. Wow. Easy as that, mate. That's That is great. And it's crazy how quick they can go wrong. And if you think Google are, they're the biggest yeah, they're technological excellent. gen ever, basically. Aren't they? Well, they I mean, they they, wrong? they've been ruling the landscape since, what, like the 90s with, with Google search. They came out with that and people were like, whoa, what's this? I had to buy internet. <laughs> that's me, that's it. Like, it's actually <laughs> scary how much you use it. Yeah. Like, even before we started this podcast, I think I Googled it. Google somewhere about 10 times for... <laughs> yeah. Look, hopefully, technology for me is the benefit civilization and not to replace life. Because there's some people that I find actually live on their phone or live in a digital world which isn't a real, a real meaningful relationship. And I can be a victim of that where it's like, Okay, how many likes did something get? Okay, is that a reflection on me? Is that a reflection yeah. on X, Y, and Z? But that's not true because take out all that noise. There's only a select few people in your circle that you actually will really ever give a fuck about, and you want to nurture them, their, their relationships, not the fake relationships that you know. Say someone who really likes you because you're a cool person, or you're a girl, and you have all these people, all these young men, who are maybe like, oh, she's so beautiful, and inflates your ego. All that shit's meaningless. There's only a few things that matter in life, and experience in life is one of them. Don't live in your device. Don't live in AI. Don't live in a digital verse. It's not real. Be human. Be human. Be present. There's a book that people should read. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called The Power of Now. Right now, I've never read that. The Power of Now is an amazing book. Just check it out. It's a little bit religious, but not religious. So he, he does mention that he was a monk for so many years, and, you know, it's how he found to be in the now, and... Oh, all this yeah. other stuff. But he does kind of caveat that and say you don't need to be religious, you don't need to be religious. Mm-hmm. But it's all about how many times are we in our own mind ma- making fictional kind of fictional movies in our own head about the future or we de- uh, go into the past in happier times, maybe more prosperous times, maybe before your wife left you or yeah. maybe, you know, whatever whatever your, 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 your current state refers. And if you're in a bad place, you'll, your mind will go back to the better times mm-hmm. and then you know, if you're the other way and you're like, you're not living in the now because you're always living for the future, mm-hmm. which could be, we could maybe say we'd be more prone to that because we run businesses and you're always thinking, okay. yeah, when I get here and whenever I get there, that can be very toxic for yourself. Being now, how often do you just not think of any of that and just think, wow, I'm in a, in a space here with John and then I'm fitting this laptop. Like, you'd be very present, present. to yeah. what's here now because the future doesn't exist and the past no longer exists. You'll only ever in this lifetime have the now. Nothing, nothing else exists. So if you're like, a week from now I'm going to see Dr. Bennett. No, you're not. Because a week from now doesn't exist. You Right now exists. A week from now I could hit Bennett's fucking dead and we're all dead. So you only ever, ever have the now. And for me, <laughs> in a period of time, <laughs> me in a period of time, it was a stressful period of time for me. It really relieved me to think. I was doing this thing where movie reel in my head of a of a bad situation in the future. That future never happened. But during that time I had anxiety about something that never actually came to fruition. Oh, wow, you're worried about something that hasn't happened yet. But lots of us do that, we do it all the time. Do it all the time. You could have an amazing month and this is good for business business people. You could have an amazing month. Amazing month. Best month you ever had. And then in your mind you could go, you know what I'm just now I can next month. Yeah, or, oh, what happens if I don't, you know, get enough to cover these expenses? You're all, you can get in that mindset of thinking in the future and being anxious about the future. Mm-hmm. You get me? I, that's where I think the business owners can go. Are you having, like, a really good time? You're like, when is this going to end? Things are going too good at the minute. Totally. And I, I think, guys, can I get this on the me now here? Fuck's sake. Get, had to start at me. <laughs> <laughs> guy, I think, guys, you haven't run a business, mm-hmm. right? They're not taking away from guys who who work hard and turn up every day and do their bit. But yeah. guys who are maybe a small business, self-employed, work on their own, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to stay motivated. Yeah. Because just what you say there, you may have a record break a month, right? Yeah. Say you do X amount of sales or X amount of clients or services or whatever, mm-hmm. then next month, 
one. Show me a client. Show me a customer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the the normal person, if you were in that situation, the way small business owners and entrepreneurs are, mm-hmm. they may go, "My God, I have my mortgage payment coming up. Yeah, I have my car payment coming up. Yeah, they may go, I says more good. I can go back to, I can, I can go back to get a normal job. I have a a, a monthly salary coming in X amount. And they know, but as a as a business owner, mm-hmm. you don't have that security. None. So you can't control. You can't control the finances. Yep. Externally. Yep. You can't control the environment. Yep. You can't control your clients. Yep. Don't get me wrong. You can do stuff to mitigate the risks, but ultimately, like Josh, I couldn't grab you and say you're buying fucking beard oil tonight. Well, you could. I could. You call boys. Yeah. You call boys. Mate. <laughs> you need bad ones, but then I've lost you next month. Hundred percent anonymous review. One star. <laughs> Great customer service. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it, it's. It's scary, dude. It is. Yeah. I mean, for me, that that old age was then comes in, and it's only the strong survive. Tough times will always come. I don't care where you are in life. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care how happy you are in your marriage. Tough times will come. And when them tough times come, you got to fucking stay strong. Uh, you got to be in yourself and say, I am this man that I say I am. And no matter what the externals are, I'm going to continue to be this person. So it's like if the man who has ten pounds in account in his account acts like a millionaire, goes in the places, dresses well, no money in the bank, dresses well, speaks well, speaks to you with um with real grit. You're going, that guy's going to make it. Don't matter. You don't. Ha- you do not know how much money he has in the bank, but you just as a human being, you get an aura off people, you get a feel off people. You're like that person. He'll be all right. He's determined. He'll be all right. Mm-hmm. And I I like to think sometimes I can be that person that. If I fucking go well and never happens, but say I went to zero. Right. Which can happen, happen to some of the fucking top people in the world. Yeah. So say I went to zero, I feel like no matter if I went to zero and I had to get the fucking bus, I would get back. I would make my way back at some stage, somehow, some way. And I think that there's a the kind of mindset that anyone who's new in business needs to have. No matter what happens, I'll make it work. If I have to do deliveries to the Chinese in the weekends, I'll do it. See if I have to take a part-time job in Amazon Warehouse, I'll do it. I don't have any kind of ego. I'll have humility if it if it means working for myself. Ultimately, I'll shovel shit if I can work for myself. Hundred percent. I'm sure you feel like that now. Seventeen jobs in the background yeah. there, and and just to touch on that, I can remember going back quite a bit. Right, I can remember I was renting a house. As a young man in my twenties, hmm. I worked two jobs, and I can remember this is terrible. I can remember searching in the sofa for coins it's to try and get like, and not even saying that for like the podcast. I can generally remember searching in the sofa for coins to try and get like bread and milk. Yeah, uh, I can. I will never forget that. It was terrible. No feeling like that is terrible. It? There's no problems. You don't think you have problems till you got money problems. Mate, and problems are the worst. And the thing with that was, <clears throat> I was working two jobs, mm. but I didn't control how much I was getting because the two bosses were saying, right, John, you have 15 hours this week. Mm. And the other guy was going, you're doing a Saturday night and a Sunday night. Here's four hours of base. You're doing a six to 10. That's right. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Where now, nah, <clears throat> where I'm, I'm cutting hair full time and I'm doing my, my, e-commerce big fat beard online mm. I have two sources of income which I can control mm. if I want to go in 9 to 9 which I do on a Thursday I'll mm. do it if I want to go in 9 to 9 Friday yep. I can do it yep. and then I can make more products I can push more products ultimately I can control how much I can potentially have coming in rather than eliminate eliminate it totally by being told you're doing four hours this, this week do you get me? It's, yeah. I, I absolutely see where you're coming from. And it, again, it comes into my mind about the naivety maybe of some people who think whenever they're going to have this and me is this, that you're, you have an e-com business, this is perfect for this. People who start an e-com business go, I only need to work four hours a week. I'll have the money roll. I don't need to work no more. No more four hours a week. Does not work like that. Almost everyone who goes into business, especially for the first five, ten years, you will work like a fucking dog. More. 
You will work way more than 40 hours. Because you, you're not even including the hours where you're sitting there and you're having dinner and then you're fucking someone's texting you about something's kind of urgent. You're going, fuck, I don't buy that. You know, there's half an hour, 20 minutes. Man, with, yeah. Over every single other day, blah, blah, blah. So you're going way over 40 hours. Easy. Like, easy. Even in your basic week. Yeah. Easy going over 40 hours. And then, for example, dealing with suppliers. Like, if you need if you need stuff for the shop. Or dealing with even people in the shop. Or dealing with problems around the shop. Like, these things pop up. And usually it's not when you're there. It's usually when you're just left or whatever. Mate, yeah, like... And you're sitting mm-hmm. outside, right? Like, here, how do I sort that out? My fucking eyes melt. No, I was TV. But even like in terms of me doing like the the beer curse stuff, I make everything myself. Yeah. So yes, it's okay on all. To- it's okay and well and good having these products to sell. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't stay behind at night or go in early mornings, like my missus would tell you, I'd be like, "Well, my my borders do here. I'm going in early." Yeah. You know, or I'm staying late. Yeah. You have to make the product. Well, I have to make I make my own product, so I have to make them in order to have them to sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that in itself can become a full time job while actually doing my other stuff. Do you know what I mean? So you never switch off, mate. Never ever. Yeah, see I mean a lot of people don't even think that a lot of people don't even know that you make that stuff yourself. It's just kinda like you get them from fucking India and gets them it comes labeled and <laughs> just hang out <laughs> <don't be> a <laughs> No, that's exactly what I don't want to do. I make it all myself, so I know where it comes from and it's high quality. Yeah. But it comes as comes as a sacrifice to actually doing taking the time to do it because it's not like you just go out and just whack a few products together. No. No. And then you have a lot of people who are try, trying to uh, cheat the system. You ever heard of drop shipping? Yeah. So there's drop shipping and there's a couple of other versions of drop shipping. Or like you'll start your own e-com brand, but it'll not actually be your brand. You never touch it. So like print on demand. Yeah. So you ever heard of print on demand? Yeah, yeah. So you got print on demand. You got drop shipping. But for me, a lot of this is like a, I wouldn't say a Ponzi scheme, but it's almost like a scam to the end user because what you're trying to do there essentially is sell something that you know you're not you're not looking after end the end. You're buying a done for you product. That you're going to pretend is a brand that you haven't really given any life to. They'll pump millions into it on ads. Mm-hmm. They'll make say two, say they pump two million in. They'll make two point seven on the seven. Their costs for say four hundred grand. They'll walk away with three hundred grand profit, which is great. Well, oh, the dog you are without doing anything. But I mean, it spawns all them little rats. Me and like I'm, I don't want to be nasty to people, but like all these little people who want to get rich quick. There's no such fucking thing. And if you do, you rip someone off. Perfect. If you get rich quick, with a given value to this fucking world, whatever your value is, you're probably doing something wrong. You're probably fucking someone or doing something sleazy, which will come back. Ultimately, the bite in the well, kind of it. It's not sleazy or it's wrong because it is. It is a business model in a in a sense. The fuckers who sell you courses on it, they're, they're all fucking little leeches. They're everywhere at the minute. They're fucking everywhere. Everywhere. Everyone, and I don't, I don't think one course fracks all because they can't, they can't teach you everything that you need to know. If they made so much money doing it, yeah. they wouldn't need to sell you a course because they're all full of shit. That's the controversial. <laughs> well, it's it's true. Yeah, I got guys in the in the in my world who I who advertise me flat out. We can get you six high paying clients for at least twenty five thousand dollars a month. Blah blah. Here's me. Right, okay, I'll click on the profile. Click on the profile. They don't exist. They don't have a business. It's just one fucking random dude who's apparently made this fucking multi-million pound agency. It's like these are all little fucking internet rats. That's under your skin, is it? It like, does. I don't like it because I'm on the ground. Like, I'm constantly grinding. Like, like, educating myself yeah. on everything and grinding and trying to help people, trying to get people value. Mm. They have fuckers do, like that who'll come in and do a six-week course on Zoom with you, talk shit in your ear about things you would have heard a thousand times anyway through Google, and then go, yeah, mate, that's £7,000. The best ones. Fuck you. The best ones are, when you're saying about that ad, right? So they do a really catchy ad, and you go, for some of the guys, you'll go, fuck, I could do that. Then you click into it, right? And you don't get to speak to the guys in the ad. It's some fucking automated stuff that you're going to do and yeah. it doesn't even work anyway they just cash in <laughs> and a good thing is because I cut her as well and Barbara right I have some 
very successful clients and I would have great conversations with them because whenever you sit in my barber chair, I probe the life out of you. Uh-huh. I mean, if you're quiet, I'm talking to you, I'm asking you questions, right? But some of the guys, I'll give one particular, I'm not going to mention any names, right? Yeah. But we talk sort of businessy when he's in the barber chair, right? And we're talking about like them courses and stuff. And he says, John, he says, they don't fucking work. He says, I'll tell you why. He says, I've been doing this business for 30 years. Uh-huh. And it's only in the last eight years that he's been stepping back. Right. He's had his team around him has been there for 20, 25 plus. Where now they know what to do. Yeah. If they do it, they do it well. Yeah. He's no problem. Yeah. Where now he can, if he wants to go on holiday with his family, he'll go. If he wants to take a day off here or a week off, he'll go. Yeah. But he says, Anything, anybody who says get rich quick within a certain amount of time, like six weeks, six months, a year, he says, forget about it. He said, this fucking balls. He said, okay, okay you may make a quick buck of it. Yeah. But we're, you can't sustain it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll never, you'll never feel, um, like, satiated. I'll never feel like a good man. Like, if I sat at home going, yeah, you know, Janet down the street just gave me 12 grand and, you know, her fucking business just shut there. It's like, whoa. Yeah, um, that's fucking scummy. Yeah, it's not cool. It's not cool. Like, I think when you run the business, you gotta have good morals behind it, build good reputation, good customer service. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely you're there, and people can relate to you. Yeah, you know, like I, anybody who messages me on Instagram or through the website or anything, mm-hmm. I do my utmost to reply to them as quick and as best as I can. Yeah, it's always personal. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I have a, an automated message when you message me on Instagram. Call that many a time. That <laughs> alerts me to say, "Josh has messaged you." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I go right. Happy days. I'll have a quick read and I'll go right. It's on my list to message him back. To the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll find me a, mes- a message back. Yeah, but they will get a message from me, and I'll address it as best as I can. Yeah. So you're building um, rapport with your customer. Yeah. You know, an example would be say, customer had a problem. Yeah. Uh, first thing you're going to do, you're going to apologize to them. Absolutely. Yourself. Yep. Then you're going to sort out what the problem was, fix it, turn them around, and people appreciate that instead of them just being palmed off and being like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's rapport, it's good morals, and it's being personal. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if you're if you're if you're not personal with your brand or your business, it becomes very uh, cold. Is not the word, but you're not in. Uh, touch or in contact with your your, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like look, you can't get something for nothing in this life. You gotta give something. There's um, there's guys watching on Dragons Den, but like the American version. I forget the American version's name. But you watch, you seen Dragons Den? Oh, I love it. it was like an uh, American farmer who came up with like this system for trees to really help them grow. So like a new tree goes down, like the little stick to uh-huh. put in that has this little like TP thing that goes over over it's just like this little plastic kind of sheet and he was charging like three bucks for it, two two bucks and he's in front of the dragons and they were like why are you not selling it for seven and his face kind of dropped like you know I make a dollar whatever off every single one of these I make, I make good money off this you know yesterday I sold seven thousand of them I, that's you know nine thousand dollars like I'm happy and they were like they were really like, no he needs to sell us for seven he's like I'm selling the farmers. He had a real compass to North on who his clients were and really didn't want to rip them off. Yeah. He was like, I can't in good in good faith know that I'm going to basically put my hand in and try and stronghold the farmers who can who control the food and are hard workers, let's be honest. Farmers are hard workers and without them none of us eat. So that's because he can relate. He has yeah. a direct correlation with them where he's doing and done what they done. Yeah, and then for him to help them and create a product and go here, guys, I got this, but I want to make a wee bit off it for designing it and making it. It's not much, but here, keep your true north. Right, let's go back. Let's go back because we went screw <laughs> whip, <laughs> whip everywhere. <laughs> now, right and center. Let's go back to what we were talking about. You getting started with back, uh, big fat beard. So we got the. Uh, you just launched the the Instagram page. You just launched the the Facebook. You went to go for it, mm-hmm. and that's kind of where we were. You just you. You got in the go for it, and that wasn't was that for financial help as well? Did you take the loan at the start? No, there was no loan. There, sorry, there was there is no loan for the go for program. 
The thing I helped you with that one, the the British bank one, I forget. I I I got it. Uh, there probably is the, the, Star, the startup loan. So you didn't get a startup. I didn't loan. get a startup loan. So you bootstrapped. That's interesting, right? Yeah. So yeah. Any, I I didn't have like thousands of pounds to just go right. I'm going to start a a men's beer car brand. Yeah, yeah. Home right ingredients, bottles, website, blah blah blah. Yeah. Blah. I was using then at the time the money I had coming in. The uh, do it bit by bit by bit by bit. So it gave right, me, okay. Right, right. So bought the ingredients, done my samples, we, we covered that. Um so then I needed to pick uh what what shape of bottle I wanted it in. Mm-hmm. Everybody does like round bottles like amber or green or clear and then a round label. I was like, right, I want something to be a bit funky that I haven't seen. Do I have the rectangular bottles? Yeah. I don't think there may be one other company now that does them, but mm-hmm. I was around first. So I was like the original to be like, my bottle's different. Yeah, yeah, like right, stand out straight away. Yeah, but as you know, we source um, stuff like that from the Middle East, yeah, uh, India, Pakistan, right. So with Nike, everyone needs yeah, to use the do. suppliers where things make sense. Well, the biggest export in the world, right? Yeah. So you go on that Alibaba and you're looking through and you're sourcing your stuff. Yeah, and one massive problem that I always faced. Like starting off mm-hmm. was if I had a went to say you were one of these guys and you were the supplier and I was like, we had love the bottles and they're like, yeah, cool, we can we can do something. I'm like, what's the price? And they're like, well, it depends how many you order. I'm like, okay, give us a hundred. And they're like, yeah, the MOQ was too low. They were like ten thousand minimum. And I go, yeah, me had you're then charging ordered me, one today. They're charging you like say they're charging you a dollar a bottle. That's ten grand. Plus the ship ten thousand bottles. It's fucking heavy. Yeah. So your shipping will ultimately be more yeah. than what the product costs. Yeah. So you don't have, I didn't have like 10 or 15 grand to go, I oh, give us uh, 10,000 bottles. Please. Yeah. Sure, yeah. The house. Plus you're paying a middleman there to be honest. Like for example, like Bry Packaging, mm-hmm. that the single them out, good company. I used them. Yeah. But like if I bypassed them, I would have went and went straight to the supplier. Yeah. I would have probably saved half of what they were charging. So if they were charging, let's say 60p a container, whenever I had the, the next ones going, 60p container I probably could have got them for like 28p mm-hmm. straight from the from the supplier yeah. and you were right with um, the minimum order quantity with 10,000 something stupid for for us with them theirs weren't theirs weren't bad but for something really small glass like, and all you see mine was ah right yeah so really small like that you would be you'd be right up there like that's hard mate, was that with labels as well no Shit. that was just if you were all labels on to it forget about it yeah so it I, more of it. I went I went local um, with my labels and the guys I use were brilliant. I'm going to plug them here. Hundred percent. That was a, a company called Belfast Print Online, uh-huh. and I dealt I dealt with a girl Natalie, uh-huh. and she was phenomenal, mate. Brilliant. And like, whenever I was like, the thing I was worried about was the MOQ. Do you know what I mean? I was like, Natty, what's the MOQ? And she's like, normally it's about a hundred, hundred and fifty. And I was like, that's the one. Then we done up uh, samples, sent them back, and he tweaked guess back and forth. Brilliant. And she actually dropped them to my door. Brian. Well, so this 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 was during COVID, wasn't it? Yep. See, this is a key indicator because COVID really spawned a lot of new entrepreneurs because you had a lot more time. Mm-hmm. A lot more time to think. Up. Almost like you were like, right, okay, the world stood still. How can I improve my life a little bit? Or how can I improve my, my vision and my goals? And I would like to plug this book here. So this book, Napoleon Hill, Keys, Keys to Success, mm-hmm recommend to anyone who watches this to go and read this book Napoleon or any book by Napoleon Hill amazing author so in this in this book he talks about the man who has no destination will go nowhere so you need to have a destination you need to have a goal you need to have an ultimate a true north you need to have whatever that true north is I want my family to have a million pound in the bank so they are never worried about money like I was who we were talking about the story about looking for mm-hmm. money for bread and milk been there done that we used to my when I was at my mum's house she would look for money whenever I was there to get electric because the meter would be going we'd have no electric uh-huh. you know what I mean we'd have to go to my granny sometimes for dinner and yeah. the times are tight and my dad worked full time you know what I mean so the times are tight for people sometimes so no matter what you do in this life don't be a drifter don't be a drifter. It's it's almost a cardinal sin to life. You need to find a reason to get you up in the morning and drive fo- drive your life forward. Because if you don't have any goal, no matter what the goal is, it could be, I want to get in shape. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's your goal. 
if you don't have one of them and you just go to work every day, you crack on, you fucking watch porn, play PlayStation all night, you're buying fucking Mackies in the every day, whatever, you're going to get to like 50, 60 years of age, look back and go, fucked it. <laughs> fucked it. And here, 50 years doesn't be long coming, right? 100%. Fucked it. You want to have some sort of goal because it makes you a better person. And it, it, you will, you'll you probably achieve it. It might not be in the time frame that you yeah. would like there. But if you have that goal down, I'm pretty confident you'll achieve it at some stage. And I even I fucking, this is going straight into my mind. I had a little page in my mum's, on the door of my mum's house, a little page. A little fucking A4 page from a book from Tesco's. And I don't want it goals, right? And on that goal, it said, I would like to have £7,000 in the bank. And to me at that time, oh my God, that was massive like dope. fucking massive. Yeah, dope. like millions of I was like, £7,000. I, I want to be able to work every day on something that I care about and a bunch of other stuff. If I look back on that wee page right now, as me and I, I'd be like, smashed it, all done, tick, 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 tick. But like, whenever I wanted them goals to happen within a year, that didn't happen. But that's just life sometimes. And if you're if you're religious in any way, you'll maybe say I, maybe I had the opportunities at the time, but I didn't take them. Mm-hmm. But it's all about taking the opportunities life life gives you, and sometimes it takes a little longer. I think you gotta go for it. Not you gotta go say. for it. If you don't have a goal, you don't have a direction. Hundred percent, because you're floating. You're float. And how many people? And I really don't want to be a dick by saying that. But how many people do you know that are floaters that just what are you doing today, mate? Same as always. Or the one I hit, same shit, different day. I get dark. I shit that. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, mate, what's happening? Same shit, different day. Well, change the shit to something good and have a better day. Yep. Obviously, everybody's circumstances are different. You know what? I'm going to talk about one of my friends, and he, he won't mind me talking about this. One of my friends is a really, really, really nice person. Like, he's just one of them people that if you ring and you're having a bad day, he'll come meet you. Mm-hmm. He's there for everyone. Good but... Dude really good dude but he falls in the category of drifting he has so much potential and a lot of different things but has got so familiar with the easy the easy in life of right i go to work get money go home go out the all weekends whatever and i will be texting him every fucking week when he going to do that thing he wanted to be a streamer for example i was like when are you going to start streaming so i'll do it next week right next week comes around i'll do it I bet what the fuck? Keep pushing it, pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it. And then he goes, I don't know how to find a goal. And I'm going, mate, who's 31 years of age. See, whatever you want to do in this life, it's possible. You want to go and be a doctor? Okay, it's six years in university. Let's start now. What do you have to do to start that process? Yes. Not the end goal? Not the end goal. How do we start? Yes. Anything you want to do, see if you're see if you're 20 years of age and you're going, I don't know what I want to do. I don't, just no time from your side. Whatever you want to do, you can go to university. You can learn on YouTube. Me, personally, I started on YouTube. And I think a lot of people start on YouTube. Like, for example, if I want to be a barber, I go, right, how to a skin fade. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be for how to a skin fade, right? Check it out. Six steps to a skin fade. Oh, beast. I'm going to watch that. And sit and watch that, to you start? know? To start. To start. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be a drifter in this life. And or uh, a couple of things he talks about is also about being a good person. Be a good person in life, no matter what what your circumstances are, if you're a good person, at some stage, fortune, your fortune will change. Your fortune will change. People will care about you. You'll be a, you'll be a pillar in your community. Do you have a little yeah. Yeah. Whereas good. we're talking about these people who do these fake, I don't want to say fake, but I, yeah, fake courses on how they're going to make you rich or how you're going to be a drop shipping king or whatever, like how to get your e-com brand to six figures in a year or something fucking stupid and it, yeah absurd that have the absurd claims and then you get in there and go right first thing you need a million for ads <laughs> right cool man. I forget that <laughs> yeah so not to kind of run things uh, in that way and then not to have any of the six the six major feel or ma- ma- six major fears hold you down right so the fear of death a lot of people fear death. Sometimes we think about it. Sometimes you get in a wee dark hole about it. But look, it's coming for us all. Guaranteed. Man. Guaranteed. Is what it is. So don't think about it. Mm-hmm. Don't think about it. There's no need. Don't f- don't fear death. Death will come regardless. The fear of old age. And so some people have the fear of old age and getting old. So people who are maybe 
40 going, oh, I'm here. I can't do that no more. I'm 40. I'm feeling so old. It's like, no, that's the fear of old age right there. You're letting age conquer you. Yeah. Where you'll have people who are 70 years of age who are still running marathons. Mm-hmm. So they haven't let the fear of old age get to them. They've done something about it. Yeah. The fear of loss of love. So the fear that, for example, you're in a happy relationship, but you're always anxious that they're going to go out and cheat on you. You're always anxious that they're going to leave you. That's the fear of loss of love. Mm-hmm. The the fear of poverty. So the fear of I'm going to be skin or the fear of you're already skin and you're never going to get out of it. I'm always going to be skin. That's the fear of poverty. Don't let the fear of poverty crush you. Mm-hmm. There's one more. I can't remember the other one. Google it. If you're watching this, Google it. They'll, they'll tell you the other one. But like that's a good way to live is all these things that really can dictate your your mood and your day. Don't don't let them. Control the controllables. You ever heard of that saying? Yeah. I heard of the different sort of way was um, if you can change it, don't worry about it. If you can't change it, then it's yeah. what it is anyway. Yeah. You ever heard of Marcus Aurelius? Oh, why? Wow. Uh, so yeah. in Marcus Aurelius' book and Meditations, a lot of what he says is essentially if you can't control it, it's not worth thinking about. It's not worth batting at. That's the one. Yeah. So it like, must it, be him who said that. Yeah. yeah. So like essentially if someone walked through that door and they were determined to kill us, you shouldn't think about it. It's like, oh, okay. Like, obviously, if we could get away, try and get away. Like, you know what I'm saying? Extreme but, example, but I get it. You know, you know what it. I'm trying to say. You know what if you can do something about it, you don't need to worry about it because you can change it. Yeah. If you can't do anything about it, then it is what it is. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, if a tornado happens outside, I can hardly go, fuck, that's my fault here. Fuck, I'm going to be depressed today. But some people do. You know what I mean? Or like the stock market crashes and it's like, right, I've lost a thousand pounds. That wasn't my fault. That's done. It happened. Yeah. Maybe bad investment for me. But I can't be like, yep, I could have stopped that happening. No one's a fortune fucking teller. Do you know what? You're going a wee bit off topic. Do you know what? No one gets me, and I never understood it until probably the last maybe two years with huh? potential. So I remember being, right? a, I remember being in a school, right? This is this is going back, right? I remember being <laughs> in a school. I never studied. Uh-huh. Hated it. Hated doing homework. Would have been a daydreamer. So I remember sitting in math class and I don't get Totally gone. Didn't yeah. What fuck Bob was going on. Right? Yeah. And my teachers always said to me, John, you have so much and so much potential. If you apply yourself in school, you will do very, very well academically. Done with GCSEs, got three Bs, three Cs. Didn't study them in my life. Think about it. Right? <laughs> I never really took it on the minutes until the past two years. Uh-huh. I was working with an individual, not one of them. Uh-huh. Right. Great guy. Lovely, lovely guy. Down to earth. Lots of charisma. Uh-huh. Cool dude. Uh-huh. Well liked. Uh-huh. Popular. Uh-huh. You know, fit, healthy, strong. Uh-huh. Had a hard upbringing. Uh-huh. But adapted very well. Uh-huh. Never applied himself. Very lazy. Right. Would have lounged about during the day. Mm. Would have not put himself out there for opportunity. Mm. Just expected to fall on his doorstep. And I never realised what my teachers were telling me back then until... I encountered this person. Ooh. And see, I'm no longer in contact with the guy or anything like that. Mm. But see if he had he applied himself, he would have been one of the best around. No doubt. Shit. And that's scary. Still you the potential. What? We have the potential. On on, on momental skill. Mate. Yeah. Scary. There's a lot of people like that. Yeah. You know what? I used to have uh the sand uh, between a couple of my friends and it, it's, he used to be a boxer and I, I used to always keep him going saying you're going to be one of them cunts in the bar talking about your glory days aren't you you're going to be one of them cunts that ah, I see if I had it done this I would have been fucking champion and this and that uh-huh. and there's a lot of people like that mm-hmm. but a lot of people who are maybe really good at football but whenever they turned 19 you think they started banging drugs into them and drinking every weekend and then just gave it up didn't make it then didn't, make it, didn't apply himself had natural talent natural talent only gets you so far you have to be a fucking hard worker. You have to have sacrifices as well. These things come with sacrifices. That's so scary. You saying that about football? I was talking to a wee man about that the other night, about a guy to play from school. Yeah? Mate, scary. Best left-footed player I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I travels for Martin, Celtic, West Ham, uh-huh. and would just rather smoke bro. But Fair naturally, enough. and the wee man didn't believe me, and I was like, I will mess. He's a guy from my class in the school and say, what about... So, 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 what did you think of him as a footballer? 
Mm-hmm. I says, this is what he's going to say when he replies. And he said it. And I showed the wee man. He's like, oh my God. Fucking hell. Scary. He ends up in jail. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I wasted my time somewhere. <laughs> Mate, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right. We, I love this conversation because we've tried, I've got one point here that we've got to, and we still haven't got to the end of it because it just starts going fucking everywhere. Right. So Big Fat Beard launched. Did you have an official launch? I had an official website launch. On right, first of July, twenty twenty was when I launched my website. Okay, so officially an e-commerce brand online, ready to go. Uh-huh. Everything else was done through sort of Instagram, Facebook. So mm-hmm. I had these oil up. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Bye, you know, help me out if you want to buy." Here's beard oil. So people were just messaging me, mm-hmm. and I was having to do everything manually, like send them a PayPal link or send them a kind of or code. Cool. Oh, very, very OG right there. I Made mean, old school, like. Friends and family, remember? That's it. <laughs> People just kind of stop. Oh, man. And I used to run around. Like, if it was a guy around a car, I used to run around just palm to him at his door. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I used to, like, meet people here. Was that during your hour of exercise or whatever the yeah. fuck you could have back in? Yeah, I was ready to walk five miles per house. Oh. Run over to the Abbey's head and meet someone who's your beard always be tight about it. <laughs> Let me know what it's like. I because you couldn't really, like, touch each other, could you? I said, I'd be like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, loads of times over COVID, like, I saw loads of beard products, but. All done old school. Uh-huh. Message me via uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and paying over PayPal, and then going and meeting them. And like, I was at their car park and sat it down. So, that's it there. Let me know what you think. What the fuck? I feel like you're selling gear. Me and Lope, I'm selling beer pellets. <laughs> sick. Oh, it? oh, yeah, that's a, that, that's a throwback to a weird out of time. COVID was a weird, weird. I, it's almost like. Everything that I mention now in terms of history, I'm like, oh, was that pre-COVID or post-COVID? Mm-hmm. You ever do that one? You ever do, oh, was that pre-COVID? You compare. Yeah, it's like, a diff- it's like a different period now, especially with like this cost of living crisis we're having and shit at the minute where it's kind of started to level itself off in terms of costs now. But like a year ago, year and a half ago, every time at the Tesco's, every time things are up. Every single week. Higher demand. It's fucking nuts. I mean, it was, it was a higher demand. Of course, but this is like big businesses, corporations are going to go. Hmm. Look at Torval, for example. Look at what? Ah, uh, mate, that was fucking nuts. Like, that fuck? was bad crack. Well, Literally. <laughs> and like, the, a guy was actually on BBC News, manufactured Torval, and he was like, listen, we are not going to run out of Torval roll. There's shit loads of it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and people were banned. I remember seeing guys were like fucking 10 big kind of Torval and like, this crap. Like, it's. People are fucking sheep, man. Ah, oh, we're going on a Twitter roll, Janet. Get the credit card quick. Get the fuck N seven on the better credit card. Yeah. Fucking Twitter roll. I skipped that one. I ordered mine online. Did you? Oh, I just two big things of it. Take it. I can't remember. I've, I I can't even remember what we done at the time. I remember my granny going fucking nuts about it though. It's like, oh, make sure to grab more roll or something. Or it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? We take some life face today. <laughs> <laughs> right. So launched in July. You say July. First of July, twenty twenty. First of July, and what what kind of happened from there? Was your first month where you expected it to be? Was it like right? We we need to improve this, or like was it was it was the start tough, or was the start off the flan start? No, no, it what? No, it wasn't off the flan start. Right, okay. So the start was kind of like right, okay. We've started going. Sometimes people make a website or make a business, and then things shit just happens overnight. Don't you? Like I was still paying my website off when I launched it. Right? Yeah, I did. Fuck. I mean, uh, there you go again. I was doing bit by bit. So whenever I got my website built, a guy built it for me. Mm-hmm. And I said, as much as it's going to be. And he was like, it's X amount. And I was going to flip me. I don't have it up front. He was like, you can pay me it off if you want. And I was like, mate, that would be incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I paid it off in, I think it was six installments or something. All oh, right, okay. Do you know what I mean? So like, say, say for example, it was 600 quid. I paid 100 pound a month. Till- ah, right, right, right. Okay, okay. Just- so I launched it and put, it up, put my products on. And at that time, I only had four beard oils, a beard brush, and a beard comb. Right, okay. So it wasn't even that much. So six products? Six products. And there wasn't there wasn't even that much uh, of a range where you could go like, oh, give us that oil, that oil, that bam, that wash, that butter. Mm-hmm. Four oils, one comb, like these. And I mean, they're a pretty simple product. Like, was that the original comb? Yeah, that's one of the original. Yeah. So whenever you launched, that was the one that came out? Yeah, well, there was a logo on it. This is the second draft, actually, sorry. Ah, uh, right. logo on it, which was, looking back now, I was brutal. Because <laughs> I was like trying to carve, carve it in wood, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hacks, but no, I mean, it was, it didn't blow up. I had guys, I think when I launched my website on the 1st of July, I think I got 32 orders or something. Right, okay. And for me, that was like, wow. 
Wow. <laughs> you know, you see these guys online, they they start a brand and they'll they'll do like ten K in the first month. Yeah, but look, for me to get thirty two order, lost a brand, I was like <laughs> Do you know what was class? You were already on there fucking spending the money then now. <laughs> Thirty two orders me and I was like, This is unreal. Uh and then I took my time like making all the products up, boxing them, writing a personal note, putting the stuff in them, you know, doing a ring from scratch. Mm-hmm. Same. So then I've got another question for you. So now we kinda know how you got you got there. Yeah. And I hope anyone who's still watching at this point stuck with us between all the other different topics which were fucking quite interesting. Um what has been the toughest kind of hurdle that you've had so far in, in running your own? you got two businesses. You can talk about both of them and run on both of your businesses. So, obviously, I worked in the motor factory, so made redundant. Mm-hmm. So I went full-time by Pop Beard mm-hmm. in the lead-up to launch it, et cetera, et cetera, over mm-hmm. COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trained to cut hair just before COVID. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was doing that. But I was only one day a week. Mm-hmm. And then, by Pop Beard... Didn't go in the trajectory that I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So I started off, which I thought was really strong with the 32 orders. Mm-hmm. But then it kind of dwindled and dwindled. Mm-hmm. only so much I could sort of do, yeah. you know. So, and because it was being redundant, I was no longer getting the... Do you remember everyone was getting like the 80% weed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was stuff and why no, no, That was, was amazing. That was different times. <laughs> like incredible. <laughs> but... That stopped then, so all I have is money from Big Fat Beard, which mm. it only started, so it wasn't turning like a mad profit because mm. everything was going back in. Yeah. So panic set in, you know. And when I was doing Big Fat Beard and stuff, at the start, I was like, oh, I could never work for anyone else. Couldn't do it. I love this. This is amazing. You know? Yeah. The COVID and all. And you're in the house all the time and you were doing all the e commerce stuff and in the Instagram and Facebook. But then obviously the finances weren't adding up to what you needed to be to sustain. A family life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So, it's like, fucking, I need an income. And I applied for a job with a local um, tower company. Shit, right, okay. Right. Right. I don't think many people actually know us. I, I went as an assistant manager. Because don't forget, I had 17 jobs before this, all different levels, all different fucking professions, if you want to call it that. It is. Right from the bottom to mid management, you know. Yeah. So had the interview, and one of the questions it was a Zoom interview because it was COVID. It was a the head of COVID, but they were still planned out. Right. One of the questions they asked me on the Zoom call for the interview was, "So we see you have your own uh, another business, like a beer curb brand." I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "I'm loving this. It's the end of this." He says, "If we are to take you on." Is that going to interfere with your job, bro? And inside me, I died. I was like, no, absolutely not. But in the back of my mind, I was going, I couldn't give a fuck about this job I'm getting. <laughs> I just want the money to sustain me. So yeah, yeah. I spiked fat beer and I went, no, of course not, absolutely. I'm fully committed. Uh-huh. But inside, I was going, oh my God. Anyway, lo and behold, started a job. Speaking to the managers and all, and they were like, right, so this is your sad hours and all. <laughs> started up like 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night oh right long hours then we were a manager it was oh, my right. Apple. right okay right and um, three Saturdays and every four mm-hmm. I was like what three Saturdays and every four till 5 o'clock chance so I went on and went on. I think I stayed six weeks oh fuck it was, so it was a short term six weeks man I stayed but it was six long ass weeks for fuck all <laughs> I was right <laughs> Mate, I would rather have had no money than do that job. Really, really disliked it? And now I, I would be that mindset. If there's something you don't like, don't pursue it. A hundred percent. Don't do it. Your happiness is worth a lot more to you than any bank statement. Yeah. I mean, if you cut out all the luxuries, like going out, eating out, well, you can eat out at McDonald's, but like all the luxuries and you just like lived on the minimum, minimum amount, you probably only need like... Seven thousand pounds, eight hundred pounds, seven thousand pounds. I mean, you're no car. You've no, you've none of that. Hoofing it, like you're hoofing it, and you're, you're. If you need, if you need to do that for a little bit, just to get your shit right. Yeah, you should. Hundred percent. Corfee, that's called eating shit. 
Yeah. You ever heard of the the Layer Kick? You ever watched the the the, the movie Layer Kick? I have. I've seen it a long time ago. Oh, man, I think it's a great analogy. Whenever you start off, you get shit on by everyone, and then you move up a little, and you get shit on just by a few people, and then you move up again, and then you shit on just by one person, and then when you get to the top, you shit on everyone else. The Layer Kick. Welcome to the Layer Kick. Wow. <laughs> That's true. mad. Isn't it? It is true. It is true. You gotta do the doggy work before you. You gotta eat some shit. Yeah, everybody does it. Yeah. I mean, and go back to that. Like, I hear this so much, right? And uh-huh. the big manager, he was a million percent. He's like, John, you're going to do so well here. We have a plan for you. We're going to move you. You're going to run your own depot. There's going to be a store manager, and they're probably going to give me forty grand a year and a company car and these benefits and all this. I was like, Fuck, sounds amazing. But then saying, I was going. <laughs> right. Um, anyway, the, the weeks, weeks, weeks passed, and the thing that broke me, right, they got this big delivery in, right, and it was like a a second hand delivery, so it wasn't new tires that they got. There was like part warrants or whatever the time, which you could still do, right? Yeah. And the because I because I was still learning the ropes as an assistant manager to be a, like a food manager, mm-hmm. the the guy goes, I need all them in size and brand order. There was. Oh, was you demented? Yeah. Me. And I went, <laughs> I went in, in size and brand order. And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Michelin, 15 inch, blah, 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 blah. I was like, right. Maybe you want seen it? <laughs> uncomprehendable how many tires there was, right? So I started doing it. I was hogging away, hogging away. So I started separating them out from like 15 to 20 inch tires, right? <laughs> then this took about two weeks. <laughs> but I'm not joking, right? Fucking demented. And he was just, he was obviously running the depot. His head was lit too because there was fitters, there was customers on the phone. The phone never stopped. I'm uh, surprised the phone worked at fucking right. Now, must, right? Uh, and he came out and I was like, well, what do you think? And he goes, that's not the way I wanted it. And I went, are you serious? He says, I wanted it in size and brand order, which I had done, but I hadn't done it the way he had envisioned to do it. Uh-huh. So we started again. Oh my God. Right. And I ended up staying at like seven o'clock one Saturday doing this. I was fuming. Went home and I was talking to Mrs. Mullen and I was like, I'm not doing this. He was like, Look, whatever your decision is, I'll support it. Yeah. And I was like, amazing. Went in on the Monday, worked the Monday, big manager came around and he cracked. He cracked at the manager who was over me. I uh-huh. was like, John had this done. He was like, why are we redoing this? That's not hard, guys. I don't want it in brand order. I want it in size order. 16 to 20. Yeah. And I was like, I had that done, but I had a brand order as well. And once he walked out, I went, can I speak to you? He went, yes, of course, what's up? I says, this isn't for me. He went, what do you mean? I says, I fucking hate this. <laughs> and he was really taken aback because in that company, he was quite stern, quite strict. People may have, he may have been a bit intimidating. Ah, right, okay. You know, that type of boss. Yeah. But if you give it to him straight, he was... Resp- he would have been like right fair play mm-hmm. and I says I fucking hate this and mm-hmm. he was like right okay what's going on I says I just don't like it it's not for me and this is my last day and he went fair enough fair play put his hand and he went John fair play to you for even putting me aside and saying to my face because anybody else we've had just never ever came back yeah and I was like look I'll finish the end of the day and do what I gotta do but that's me done and he was like wish you all the best if you ever want a job give me a shoot yeah I was like it was like a weight had just lifted off me I was like that's how you know man that's how you know you don't want you don't want to be in somewhere that makes you feel like that that Never. you're it, that like leaving it is like just purging Only. fucking yeah like just purging you wonder know what when I had the when I had the accents so whenever I mm-hmm. finally put in for the the wind up and we we wind up and I told everyone right this is the last week everyone everyone got paid everything's normal every, like don't worry about any of that. He's all we paid. Blah, blah. But we're working out this week out and then I'm closing. Yeah. So, oh, why? Blah, blah. I was like, it's not for me. Blah, blah, blah. It's not profitable at the minute because of all the costs. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, but you can fix this and this. I didn't want to hear it, mate. Oh, you were done? I was done. I was done. It wasn't for me. I love, I love this. I love the marketing game. Mm. I love video. I love pushing brand. I love sitting down and doing podcasts. This is me. Authentically me. That was more a business venture that became like my fucking life. Like I was at 10 o'clock at night and we getting phone calls at 10 o'clock at night with a newborn baby there. So it was stress beyond belief. It was just, it, 
the, all the amalgamation of the cost going up. You can't get fucking chefs because they were a dime a dozen. They had to pay them fucking mad amounts of money. And... Oh, yeah. Anyway, whenever I closed on that last day, dude, it felt like exactly what you said there. I sat that night going, oh, I feel like the world has just lifted off my shoulders. Honestly. And I do. Honestly. I tell you what, you know how intense it was? I never, ever, ever fucking cry. Ever. Cried at my daughter's birth. Yeah. Apart from that, never fucking cried. See, at night, I was in fucking bits with her. And she was like, what's wrong with me? I was like, nothing's wrong with me. I just, it, it's, it's like, it was almost like a divorce. Yeah. It was like, I was I was sad to see it go, but I fuck was I happy to get the, that I had to go. It was the best thing you could have done, isn't it? I look. Yeah, I'm fucking delighted. No, I don't mind. I yeah, was exactly. See, I, I stepped away. I threw myself full force in the big fat beard and barber. So is that your next... See, once you left the tower place, did you go into the barber? I start, I was I was doing it one night a week. So was it just, we're living fucking on the cheap here for a bit? Yeah, we were. Yeah. Right, okay. So I was, I was doing the barber and doing one night a week and doing a bit of shallow one, etc. And then in the background, I was still doing Big Fat Beard online. I was trying to bring out new products. Ah, right, okay. So it was all happening. So how long was the gap until you got started in a barber shop? Wow, so I done a 12 week barber course. Uh, right? Um, which felt like forever. But time. but whenever you were on the, you were already doing that at the, when you were at the tower place? Yeah. So whenever you left the tower place to whenever you got a barber job, how long was that period? Well, do you remember? Um, so I was. <laughs> So we were doing the barber course, right? Yes. And this was over COVID. Yes. And you weren't meant to be. Ah. <laughs> You're fucking. So I think every, looking back now. What well, they got to eat come for you now for fucking laws that don't exist anymore? Yeah, but every barber, looking back now, would have been flat out. 100%. Oh, flat out. I went to house calls making a clean fortune. I was doing one cut a week to try and learn. Yeah. You know I mean? Cutting the wee men in the house and everything. Butchering the life, I know. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then whenever, do you remember they lifted restrictions? So like restaurants open first, then bars, then leisure centres, and then like beauty and hairdressing and barber was the last thing to open. Uh-huh. Um, the guy on the barber course was like, you coming down? I think, what do you mean? He goes, come on down, first day, shop something, let's go. You can come in, you can shadow. He said, bring your clippers. Mm-hmm. Just have a wee cut comes in, I'll fire it your way and we'll see. 12 cuts my first day. Fucking hell. <laughs> I was like, I was like, someone just grabbing somebody who can't swim and just fucking them in the deep end. Yep. 12 cuts on my first day as a trainee barber. <laughs> right. Sink or swim? Sink or swim. He just says, you go ahead. He checked all the costs. And he was like, not great, but not bad. Yeah. Respectable. Sent yeah. day, 10 cuts. He says, you come in the next day? I was like, yeah. And that was me. That was it? That was it. But then it got a couple of months in. He says, I think you should get a book, see? Right, got the down to the books he profiled, put up a couple of pro, put up a couple of pictures. Yeah, put my prices on. Uh huh. Got my first five cuts on Booksy, five five star reviews. Then I started getting a wee bit of traction. I was like, right, this is where it's at. Then I was able to bring my big fat beer products into the shop on a shelf beside me, and then position myself as the beard expert and barber. Makes perfect sense. I mean, I was getting all these guys these big massive beards come in and go I heard you're the beard man I was like I'm your man sit down <laughs> and just gently done it uh-huh. and they were like amazing and Perfect. from that I just honed that honed it and honed it and yeah then, lo and behold that booksy we deleted that one then I ran the, the, the shop of the booksy so I didn't have my own personal um, booksy anymore uh-huh. I was on their one so we're building all their reviews yeah I have a new one and it says I've opened Big Fat Barbershop and stuff yeah, yeah. but hey, looking back I was mental and they haven't caught in your first day. You know what some people call that? Fiat. You needed it at the time. That was the one. And the universe said, here you go. Well, do you, you say that? Then I was a massive believer of manifestation, writing things down. And over COVID, remember you were allowed to do that walking thing? A walking thing? You were allowed to do for like two hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as I live in like Newton Abbey there. So yeah. Hazelbank was my spot. Uh-huh. That was my go-to for... Real spot, by the way. <laughs> I had wrote, I got a page, it was like a wee A2 page, right? Wrote down all my goals, aspirations, everything I wanted to achieve, right? Mm-hmm. Folded it up in an origami boat. 
we boat like that, mm-hmm. right? We're down to the seafront at Hazelbank, pull in the sea, and done my affirmations out loud on the beach with my eyes closed. I'm on that light. Let the boat go out in the sea, mm-hmm. and then breathed it all out and took in and was open to receiving everything that I had wrote down that page. Oh, and everything that was on that page, I would have achieved now. Are you cool, man? I'm a big, I'm a big affirmations guy. So, um, <laughs> you're right. Didn't work away. No, no, I'm not taking the call. It's just it, I tried to mute it there. It didn't work. <laughs> I'd be getting a wee, a wee WhatsApp from someone and uh, it didn't work. Um, right, last couple of wee topics, and then we'll we'll finish up. So, you have a new product range coming. Yes. So tell us a bit about that. Right. So currently have nine oils, nine balms, nine washes, one butter. I'm mm-hmm. um, going to bring the range up to 15. Sure. So yeah. going to start with five new oils. Totally different approach to what we currently have. Mm-hmm. Um, these are all going to be sort of aftershave, clone, real masculine sort of aftershavey scents. Mm-hmm. So if you are you have a beard and you and the missus or you and your partner are going out for dinner and then go on to the bar, mm-hmm. this is the one. Sweet. That way, right? Yeah. Bring that out in the oils first, then balms, then washes. Mm-hmm. So that'll bring the oil balm washes up to 15 products, mm-hmm. right? I have one butter tonight, or I have one butter at the minute, which is a nighttime butter. Mm-hmm. You've got all nighttime, you go to bed, wake up, beer's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to introduce a new style of butter mm-hmm. and bring out all 15 at once mm-hmm. to complement the range. So I have 15 products in each range. Right, okay. And there are going to be the you got a wee air mist or something, maybe air mist, maybe like a wee soap or something for us non-bearded guys here. Like, do you know what? Easy, I could do that. I have something else in the pipeline, which I only decided on there yesterday, the day before. I've been talking to my missus about it. Right. And it's professional development in regards to big fat beard. Uh-huh. It's going to just set me apart from all the other beard care companies because none of them have it. Brilliant. None of them have it and I should be the first. Right. Say not more because say not more. Say not more because once this goes out, and I'm sure they'll probably see a match in the boat. <laughs> well, go and follow him on Instagram, Big Fat Beard on Instagram, and you'll you'll see what the crack is. Um, right. Last but not least, what advice could you give to someone who wants to try and grow a beard? Because me personally, for example, like I'll get pa- like a patchy beard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'll miss all here, and there'll be fucking bits missing. Like, how do you go about actually growing a beard? Did you always naturally have a beard forming, or did it take like years of shaving, or like how the fuck does that happen? Well, whatever. That's such a weird question, but yeah. I don't have a clue. But everyone, everyone's different, right? So I'm quite dark hair, mm-hmm. right? So if I start to go face your hair, is really dark anyway. Mm-hmm. And it fills out quite quick. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, I was shaving when I was in school. Shit, right? Okay. You know, so I was like 15. I was standing for the mirror with a big razor, just. <laughs> Every day, next day I woke up, there would be like a wee bit of shadow. Yeah. Which I'm quite fortunate for because I can grow a real good, decent, thick beard. Mm-hmm. Um, for guys who are struggling to grow a beard, mm-hmm. nail down a really good beard routine. Okay. Right? Beard oil at the very, very least. Mm-hmm. At the very least. So, like, when you grow out whatever you have. Nah, like, nah, I say you. Right, shit, beard. right, okay. You were like, love, I'm going to grow this beard out. Mm-hmm. First thing you're going to start to find is it gets itchy. Right, okay. Right? Put on beard oil. Right. Because the longer your beard gets, it requires more moisture and condition. Mm-hmm. Your body can't keep up with that. Mm-hmm. Your body produces a natural oil called sebum, mm-hmm. which stops your itch nigh to your stage. Mm-hmm. If you're left like growing out, you'll be like, Shit, right. that's because your, your hair still got up all that sebum mm-hmm. and then it starts to go dry because there's not enough to keep it moisturized. Mm-hmm. That's where beard oil comes in. Right. Right. Beard oil is primarily for the skin underneath, not the beard. Right. Okay. Spend the while. <laughs> I just a beard at the root. Okay. Healthy root, healthy beard. Right. Healthy okay. skin, healthy beard. Right. Okay. Right. Once you're growing it, leave it the fuck alone. Okay. People, I have people messaging me all the time. Me grow my beard out, but I want to be trim. Don't trim it unless you don't trim it at all. Trim it. Leave it and don't shave the neck. <laughs> people go in right. They grow a beard and they grow it out and they go into the barber's. Go make you clean up the neck. First thing a barber he has no experience with big beards. They get the two fingers on the Adam's apple and they do that and they bring the beard up. Uh, okay. it. Yeah, yeah. This is where all your thickness comes from is your neck. Right, okay. This is growing down off your cheeks, off your chin, off your jawline. Uh-huh. And you have neck beard. Uh-huh. And you ever see the guys and they have a big, massive beard and a thick, 
Yeah. That's a neck beard. It's come, obviously, you have all this. Uh-huh. But underneath, if you took all that away, two fingers above the chin, uh-huh. you're going to have um, hair growing down off your face and off your jaw. Right. And it's going to be thin and scraggly looking and you can see through it and all okay. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Leave it alone. Now, once it goes out a couple of inches off the, off the chin, mm-hmm. go around the edges of it. Take this bit of ends off. It's not going to stunt the growth because it grows from the root. Mm-hmm. Right? Trim around the edges. Take the ends off. Take it back to where it looks really thick. I'm G1 now. I haven't touched mine in a long time because mm-hmm. I had a really bad experience in London. <laughs> right? Okay. Right. Take the, take the ends off till it looks really, really thick. Uh-huh. And just do that. A light trim. Don't get whacked in. They didn't take those off. Okay. The thing is, hydration and leave it be as best you can. Fuck, it's hard to leave it be because it gets real fucking caveman-y, doesn't it? So you want to, like, shape it in that's some sort of people, form. That's where people lose it. Right, okay. So they go, up yeah, I look homeless. That's why I shaped it off. I was like, I, it's too fucking, it's too wild. That's the way it goes. But once you get to the stage where it gets past that, mm-hmm. and then you can start to, like, trim it and sculpt it, mate, if you have a big, if you grow a big, massive beer, right, and you look crazy, mm-hmm. see, once you go somewhere and knows it right, you can trim it in and sharpen the edges and smooth it off. Yeah. It looks amazing. Fuck, oh, happy days. I'm just going to leave it. But well, there you go. You heard it from the man himself. The beard man himself. Leave the beard alone if you're trying to grow it. Don't fucking trim them. Get a beard oil. And then just let that growth happen until you're at a good stage. And then when you're happy where you are, you can kind of shape it up. Shape it up. And then you can start adding more products. So moisture, you can add in the, the beard butters and nail down a good wash routine. But don't overwash it because if you overwash it, it'll dry it out. Wash it two, three times a week. But that depends on your environment. So like yourself working in an office. Yeah. You're not going to be in like a like a really harsh environment where like if you're working on a quarry or you're a zone stick in the roads you're going to be yeah. washing every night yeah, yeah yeah but then you just got to up your hydration yeah 100% 100% John thank you so much for coming on anyone who wants to order some Big Fat Beer products working the go to bigfatbeard.com and use Big Fat 15 for 15% off there you go there you go and I'll be in the link down below if anyone wants to check it out John thanks so much for coming on mate appreciate it thank you very much it was an honour as always thank you mm-hmm.